These two planes are sometimes described on Sabayan inscriptions as Marib and the Twin Planes. The expression, two gardens to the right and to the left in the Quran, in all probability refers to the impressive vineyards and gardens in these two valleys. Thanks to the dam and its watering facilities, the region became famous as the best irrigated and most fertile in Yemen. When we examine the verses in the Quran in the light of these historical facts, we can see enormous compatibility between them. Archaeological discoveries and historical facts are totally compatible with what is written in the Quran. The people refused to heed the warnings of the Prophet who was sent to them and were ungrateful for the blessings of God and were eventually punished with a terrible catastrophe. There was also a sign for Saba in their dwelling place. Two gardens, one to the right and one to the left. Eat of your Lord's provisions and give thanks to Him, a bountiful land and a forgiving Lord. But they turned away, so we unleashed against them the flood from the great dam and exchanged their two gardens for two others containing bitter-tasting plants and tamarisk and a few loak trees. That is how we repaid them for their ingratitude. Are any but the ungrateful repaid like this? The people of Saba lived in a strikingly beautiful area with fertile vineyards and gardens. The country of Saba lay across trade routes and thus enjoyed a high level of prosperity, making it one of the most prominent cities of the age. What the people of Saba needed to do under such agreeable conditions was to eat of the sustenance provided by their Lord and be grateful to Him. Yet they did not do so. As a verse puts it, they turned away from God. Their arrogance in their well-being caused them to lose it. The whole country was flattened in a terrible flood. The vineyards and gardens of the people of Saba were suddenly left under the waters. The punishment visited on the people of Saba is described in the Quran as the Sel al-Arim or the Arim flood. This term in the Quran also tells us the way this disaster occurred. The word Arim means dam or dike. Sel al-Arim describes the way a flood occurs after a dike has been breached. The Christian archaeologist Werner Keller agrees that the Arim flood came about in line with the description of the Quran. He writes, For 1,500 years this garden of spices bloomed around Marib. 
That was until 542 BC. Then the dam burst. The importunate desert crept over the fertile lands and destroyed them. The people of Sheba, says the Quran, had beautiful gardens in which the most costly fruits ripened. But then the people turned their backs upon God. Wherefore he punished them by causing the dam to burst. Thereafter nothing but bitter fruit grew in the gardens of Sheba. The dam that may be considered the most important source of the people of Saba's wealth and well-being was also the means of that ungrateful people's destruction. After the disaster of the Arim flood, the area turned into a desert, and as the agricultural fields disappeared, the people of Saba lost their most important source of revenue. The people of Saba, who ignored God's call to believe in Him and give thanks, were thus chastised. Following the terrible damage wreaked by the flood, the people of Saba began to fall apart. They abandoned their homes and migrated to northern Arabia, Mecca, and Syria. Marib, where the people of Saba had once dwelled, was now a desolate ruin and is most definitely a warning to everyone who commits the same mistakes as the people of Sabah.